Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with another video today. We're going to talk about more genetics. But first of all, here are the questions. Go ahead and write them down. More genetics. You know, we studied a little bit about Mendel and about the DNA and the RNA. Uh, let's dive a little bit more into genetics of human beings. Both parents pass alleles for traits on to their offspring. We get stuff from our mom and we get stuff from our dad. And You know, we mentioned that there are like 30,000 or so different traits that we could get from either one, that we can get from them. The traits we see are determined by more than just what you see in a normal Punnett square. They're determined by a variety of inheritance patterns. Now one, well, you can see the three different patterns we're going to talk about right here. We have one of them is a single gene with two alleles. Now this is very much like the Punnett square, where you have on one side you have the, the female parent, and on the other side you have the male parent. You have a dominant and recessive possibilities and then you do it like a Punnett square. Now some of our genes and some of our phenotypes happen to be this way and that makes that pretty simple. And the example we're going to use here is the widow's peak. Now we may have mentioned in class about the widow's peak. Here's what a widow's peak looks like and some people have it and some people do not but it turns out that a widow's peak is dominant over the straight hairline. So this particular Punnett square would be for a widow's peak. If you have somebody who has a widow's peak, then they could be capital W, small w, where the dominant mask the recessive, and you may have a female, which is the same thing. You have the dominant over the recessive, and you can see a very familiar like type of Punnett square, you have these three which do have the widow's peak, one of which, this one right here of course, does not have the recessive, but these do and the recessive is masked by the capital W, by the fact that widow's peak is dominant. And we have one-fourth probability of the widow's peak not showing up, of having a straight hairline right there. So that, that's pretty straightforward. You have a simple gene with two alleles. But unfortunately, human beings are, are complex, and not everything is as simple as that. And one example of that is this next one, a single gene with multiple alleles. So it's not just the two normal alleles like we saw in Mendel's Punnett square. Uh, and the example I'm going to give is blood type. You have the blood type potential of either A, B, O, or something called AB. Now, this is more than two. You've got several possible blood types, but here's what you have. This is kind of like a Punnett square, and I'm sure you can make one for this, but follow with me. I think you'll get it. If you have a, you can see that A and B are dominant. O is recessive, the little O, capital A, the capital B. So if you have a, a father and mother and a father that's A, well, that's going to be obvious. You're going to have a child that is A. But if you have a mother or father, one of which is A and the other of which is O, in this case the mother's A, the father's O, dominant is going to be the A. So the child will have the dominant. Now they're probably going to have, well, in fact you see it here, they're going to have, they're going to be a carrier for that O, but they're not going to be having the O. Now in the next generation, the F2, you have a one, one in four chance of having an O, but you, you know how that goes. It's kind of like this right up here. Father has an A, mother has an A, father has a B. They are co-dominant. They are co-dominant, so just like we saw in the book where the rooster, white rooster and black rooster took both of the 
genes that turned out to be white and black offspring. Here you are codominant, and that's how you get blood type AB. So, pretty straightforward here. You have mother, father, both B. The child will be B. You have mother, father, one of which is B. In this case, B, just like A, is going to be dominant. So you will have the blood type of B. And the only way you get O is if you have both mother and father that are O. You do not have a dominant A or B to mask the O. So you're not going to have that many times where a person is a blood type O. So blood type is an example of where you have multiple alleles, not just two alleles like you would expect from before. And a third one is where you have traits controlled by many genes, not just multiple like two, three, four, but we're talking about many genes. And there are a couple of different examples I'm going to use for this. One has to do with height. Height, you see people all kinds of different ranges. You have people who are super, super tall. You have people who are tall, but not in the super, super tall range. And you have people who are tall for their family, but not tall for society. So height has so many different outcomes. It's not as simple as put this together with this and come up with this, put this together with this and come up with this. It's not tall versus short when it comes to human beings. It may be a little easier whenever you have Mendel's plant size, but it's not as easy whenever you're talking about human beings. You have multiple possibilities. The genes act together, all the different possible alleles, the many different traits all act together to produce the one phenotype. And that phenotype can have varying different results. I mean, you can have anything from five foot one to six foot 11 or, or even beyond. Another thing that is like that way is skin color. And this is the skin color. Now, I don't want, know why they put the father along the side and the mother at the top here, because that's generally not how it goes. But here's how it is with skin color. You have a wide range of skin colors. You see people who are as dark as can be and people who are as white as can be. And you have multiple, many genes, I guess farther than multiple, many genes which control that. And here is kind of a complicated Punnett square to where if you have a father who is A, 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 B, and a mother who is A, B, A, B, the dominants are going to to control. It looks like dominant is dark in this case. So you have all the way down to where the lightest of people would have the recessive double A and double B, for example, and you have every possible thing in between. You don't have to be able to memorize how to do one of these complicated Punnett squares. It just kind of goes to show you what happens that you have many genes. It's going to really complicate things and make it to where you have varying degrees of skin color or varying degrees of height. Let's go to talk about sex chromosomes. We have all female sex chromosomes are X chromosomes, and you may see that the female here is XX when it comes to Punnett square type uh, representations. The males are XY. And we'll see that a little bit when we get to this Punnett square. Uh, the egg carries the X chromosome. The egg, of course, is the sex chromosome for, for females. And the sperm is either going to carry, the sperm for males is either going to care and carry an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. And it's kind of 50-50. You have about half the sperm cells that are X and about half the sperm cells that are Y. And what it is the male that determines the gender of the child. So it's just kind of the 50-50 probability that it would be an X chromosome that ends up fertilizing the egg or the Y chromosome that ends up fertilizing the egg. Whichever one of those does the actual fertilization is the one that determines the baby's gender. And you can look here at this Punnett square. 
we have if 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 it's X chromosome with X chromosome from the male, X chromosome, X chromosome, it's gonna be a girl. And same here, you have a girl. But if you have the Y that fertilizes the egg, then you have a guy and a guy. So this equates to roughly a 50-50 chance of it being a boy or a girl. And it is the male that actually determines that. I remember a tale of an oh some kind of ancient king of England, Henry the whatever it was, who would kill off the wives that didn't give him a male child. Well, it wasn't the wives. It was him that ended up producing the female children that he, for whatever reason, didn't want to have. So that's a little bit about the Punnett square and actual human beings. Some other human traits are also carried on the X or Y chromosome. And one of them is red-green color blindness. Now you can look down here and see the normal color is green here and red here for these apples. But somebody who is red-green colorblind sees something like this, where they cannot really distinguish between greens and reds. They all kind of look the same. That is a trait that is carried along the X and Y chromosomes. Now here's why. The Y chromosome is not as big as the X chromosome. It's not as big as the X chromosome. So the Y chromosome often does not have a matching allele to match all the X chromosome genes. You know, there are genes, 30,000 or so genes, we used in, as, as an example in the last one, along the X chromosome. You just don't have that much space on the Y. So it is the males, the guys, who are actually more likely to have any of these sex-linked traits like red-green colorblindness. It's almost always the male who would be colorblind. You just don't find females that are colorblind. Only females, however, are the carriers. The females are the carriers, and you can kind of see in this Punnett square right here, here we have the male along the side. I don't know why they're putting it on the side. And the female who is right along the top and it is the females that are the actual carriers of the color blindness. You see, here is the color blindness. And whenever you have that happen, you have that chance, that one in four chance of a male, XY, being color blind. Isn't that kind of interesting? Oh, let's see if we have here. They have dominant and recessive alleles for the traits the females do. Now, it's not all about genes. Environment does play a role in human characteristics. For example, and here's somebody who is practicing the fiddle. That person can get better with practice to couple with his genetic uh, uh, how, how can I put this, genetic disposition to be very coordinated. Um, there are lots of different things that environment influence. The diet people have influences the height of people. If somebody has a poor diet all their life, then the chances of them growing as tall as they could are not very good. Practice also influences muscle coordination and so on. Well, I hope you have learned a little bit more about genetics.